So what does that call or put thing mean? So a call, there's two types of options, call and put. And a call is, is all about being long and a, or buying. And a put is all about being short or selling. But you can buy or sell a call and you can buy or sell a put. If you trade a call, you're trading the option to be long. So if you buy a call, you buy the option to be long at the strike price if you want to. So it follows that if you sell a call, you're giving that option to someone else. So if you sell a call, you're giving the option to the buyer, and the buyer can choose to be long if they want to. So that means if they do choose to be long, you'll be short. So we have um, a put, sorry, a call and a put. If we buy a call, we could be long. If we sell a call, we could be short. A put is an option to be short. So if you, you can buy a put, you can buy the option, you buy the option, but the option you're buying is that you can choose to, to sell the market at the strike price if you want to. So you're buying the opportunity to be short. So we buy a put, actually we're buying the opportunity to be short. It follows that if we sell a put, we're giving that option to someone else. So if they decide to be short, that will make us long. So that's the first thing we need to get our minds around. Call and put. Call is about the option to be long. Put is about the option to be short. Um, one of the sort of golden rules of options is if you, if you buy an option, you pay the premium up front. Uh, and therefore, if you sell an option, you get the money up front. So whenever you buy an option, whether it's a call or a put, the common um, belief is you have to pay the premium up front. If you sell a put, you receive the premium up front. So uh, we talked about Nick Leeson in the day at Bearings Bank. So we're talking a while ago now. But he, um, he just made a simple error when he was transacting futures on behalf of a client and lost $5,000. Not so bad, really. But um, he decided, rather than to admit to the error, to try and trade out of it. So to try and speculate to get that money back. And um, that speculation led to a $500,000 loss. So it didn't go very well, really, um, to say the least. And the problem he had is, is the way he hid this from the bank was he used all the client, client, bank's client money to hide it. So he put the loss in amongst all the client money and no one noticed it. Um, but he ran out of client money eventually. And if you watch the film Rogue Trader, um, he's in the gym in Singapore, very frustrated, punching the, the punch bag. And it suddenly occurs to him, what I could do is I could sell loads of options and I'll get paid the premium up front, and I can use that money to hide the loss. So he sold an awful lot of options, but he did it the same, he did it going the same way he'd always been going. So he, I can't remember, he, he had a view on the Nikkei in particular. I can't remember whether it was going up and he was bearish or the other way around, but he carried on doing the same thing, and he was still wrong. So yes, he got loads of money up front, but of course, all those options as they start to go through their lifetime, he has to then compensate the person he sold the option to. All his bets were going the same way and he just kept adding to them and adding to them. So that's when it went to a billion, which in the 90s was an awful lot of money. I mean, a billion is quite a lot of money today, but it was an awful lot of money in, in the 90s. Um, I mean, it, and I, it's a ridiculous idea to sell options just to get the money because clearly you're going to have to settle the option at some point. But he was desperate, I guess.